In this video, I will present the solution to the first practice problem in homework one. The problem reads as follows. You've experienced convection cooling if you've ever extended your hand out of the window of a moving vehicle or into a flowing water stream. With the surface of your hand at a temperature of 30 degrees Celsius, determine the convection heat flux for A, a vehicle speed of 40 kilometers per hour and air at negative 8 degrees Celsius with a convection coefficient of 40 watts per meter squared Kelvin, and B, a velocity of 0.2 meters per second in a water stream at 10 degrees Celsius with a convection coefficient of 900 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Which condition would feel colder? Contrast these results with a heat flux of approximately 30 watts per meter squared under normal room conditions. Okay, I'm going to start by restating the problem. There's a somewhat long problem statement. So to summarize, we have a hand experiencing convection cooling. It is immersed in two fluids. The first is water. The water is at a temperature of 10 degrees Celsius, which in Kelvin is 283 Kelvin. It has a convection coefficient H of 900 watts per meter squared Kelvin. And finally, it's at a velocity of 0.2 meters per second, which translating is about 0.7 kilometers per hour. OK, we also have a second fluid, air. Our air is at a temperature, T infinity, of negative 8 degrees Celsius, which again in Kelvin is 265 Kelvin. It has a convection coefficient H of 40 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Finally, the air is moving at a velocity of 35 kilometers per hour. The point of this problem is to show that the air is moving faster and has um, a colder temperature, negative 8 versus 10 degrees C, as compared to the water. But we will, of course, be surprised by the result. Finally, we have a hand, uh, which we will start by doing the second part of our problem, which is um, the energy balance and control volume. So we'll draw our hand, which you know, looks something like this. And we'll draw our control volume around that hand with a very big pinky. OK. Uh, now we are going to draw what's going on, which is there's fluid flowing over this hand. And we have one mode of heat transfer here. Because we have a fluid in contact with the surface of our hand, we have convection heat transfer. We'll draw that as an arrow like this and label it Q double prime convection. Remember, Q double prime is a heat flux. OK. Finally, we do know that the surface of our hand is at 30 degrees Celsius, which translating is 303 Kelvin. OK. So we've restated our problem, and we've drawn our energy balance on a control volume, specifically a hand with some heat leaving as convection. Now, what we're asked to do, what we're trying to find, is what feels colder? OK. Uh, to do that, we're going to come up with an approach, which is our third step in our problem solving um, approach. And that is, we're going to model convection for both fluids. And then we are going to compare our heat fluxes that we get. We'll say compare heat flux. OK, so we have our restated problem. We have our energy balance and our approach. Finally, we're going to do the analysis part of our problem. OK, like we said, we're going to model convection for both fluids. That is done using Newton's 
law of cooling, or our convection heat transfer coefficient times the temperature of our surface minus the temperature of our fluid. All right, we have two different fluids, so we'll plug in one for each. First, we'll do air. Again, this is a heat flux, so we'll have units of watts per meter squared. Uh, so for air, we have 40 watts per meter squared Kelvin times our T surface of our hand, which is 303 Kelvin, subtracted from our T infinity, which is 265 Kelvin. All right, uh, multiplying all of that out, we get 1,520 watts per meter squared. Now if we do it again, but this time for water, we again use Newton's law of cooling, uh, but we plug in values for water up here. So we have 900, a much larger convection coefficient, uh, times the temperature of our surface, again 303, minus the temperature of our water, which is 283 Kelvin. When we run those calculations, we get 18,000 watts per meter squared. We'll go ahead and indicate those with boxes. Okay, finally, we do the last portion of our problem, which is discussion. Here we see that even though the water is moving slower and as at a hotter temperature as compared to the air, the fact it's water means it has much better convection potential. And so in the end, the heat flux from the hand into the water is significantly larger than the heat flux from the hand into the air. And so we will just say in the discussion that the water feels colder. Okay, and that is our solution to the first practice problem in homework one. That's all, thank you.